top tips from a digital photographer, gaming news from E3, and humans will steal jobs from Amazon drones. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 360 for Tuesday, June 16th, 2015. This episode is brought to you by Blue Apron. Blue Apron will send you all of the ingredients to cook fresh, delicious meals with simple step-by-step -step instructions right to your door. See what's on the menu this week and get your first two meals free by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's blueapron.com slash twit. Welcome, I am Megan Maroney. Let's get to today's big news. Yesterday we heard about humans stealing the jobs of robots at Apple, and today we have another story about more humans stealing jobs, this time from drones or possibly from other humans. The Wall Street Journal reports that Amazon is considering plans to let you and me deliver packages. People familiar with the matter say that Amazon would keep packages in brick and mortar stores in urban areas and let amateur delivery people pick up the packages if the ultimate destination is on their way. Startups like Instacart, Rody, and Ship already have similar services, but Amazon trying this kind of service would be a whole different ball of wax. No one at Amazon confirmed this story. According to the New York Times, the FBI and the Justice Department prosecutors have uncovered evidence that the St. Louis Cardinals have hacked the Houston Astros. Now, those are American baseball teams, for those of you not familiar with the game, and also for those of you not familiar with the American game of baseball, hacking into each other's network is not part of the game. Investigators have uncovered evidence that the Cardinals gained access to the Astros network, including internal discussions about trades, proprietary statistics, and scouting reports. Reports say that the hack was the act of vengeful front desk employees and that the network was vulnerable in part because Astros general manager Jeff Lunau used to work for the Cardinals and he apparently used the same passwords to secure both databases. A researcher at Now Secure says that over 600 million Samsung mobile devices are vulnerable to hackers and cyber snoops through the SwiftKey keyboard. This is the pre-installed SwiftKey keyboard that comes with many Samsung devices and cannot be uninstalled. Now Secure reported the security hold to Samsung in December of last year, but at Black Hat in London today, Now Secure was still able to replicate the hack in the newly released Samsung Galaxy S6. Samsung delivered a patch earlier this year, but it's unclear how many carriers provided the patch to their networks. You can check this list on the, on the link in our show notes to see if your Samsung device has been patched. If not, you should avoid insecure Wi-Fi networks and contact your carrier for patch information and timing. In an announcement at the E3 gaming conference this week, Microsoft unveiled its Xbox Elite wireless controller. The controller will let you swap between a variety of metal thumbsticks and D-pads for personalized control. It has four slots for interchangeable paddles, so you can attach and remove them without tools. You'll also be able to use an app on Xbox or Windows 10 to assign a wide range of inputs to each paddle. Today, Paul Therott spotted the price tag for this controller on the Xbox website. It will cost you $150. For a few months now, we've been hearing rumors about the PlayStation View's new TV series. TechCrunch reports that at E3 yesterday, the company made it official. And although details were fuzzy, PlayStation View will be the first to offer a la carte TV stations to the American consumer. And it's supposed to roll out in July. Coming up, photo essayist, TEDx speaker, and best-selling author Karen Walron tells us why blogging still matters. But first, this show is brought to you by our sponsors. If you want to support the show, we don't ask for money, but we do ask that you consider trying the products that our sponsors have to offer. Now, I get it. Not all of them offer a service you might want, but we do all need to eat. So Blue Apron is an easy way to try and see if you like them. Blue Apron delivers ready-to-cook meals right to your door. For less than $10 per meal, Blue Apron sends you fresh ingredients perfectly proportioned with step-by-step -step recipe instructions. Now, I don't know about you, but I do not like using my iPad or my phone to display recipes while I'm cooking. I end up getting greasy fingerprints and flour all over them. Blue Apron also sends you printed pictures on hard cardstock so you can spill stuff all over them and it won't matter. You can still read the directions. No trips to the grocery store and no waste from unused ingredients. Last night, I came home to a delicious, healthy meal of salmon cooked by my husband from our Blue Apron box. 
a husband does not come included in the box. However, each balanced meal is 500 to 700 calories per serving. Cooking takes half an hour. Shipping is free and the menus are always new. They will never send you the same meal twice. They work around your schedule and dietary preferences and Blue Apron's experts source only the best seasonal ingredients for incredible meals like hoisin glazed chicken meatballs and paneer and vegetable katie rolls with tamarind date chutney. If you care about providing healthy meals for you and your family, try Blue Apron. It is a better way to cook. If you want to support this show, you can, and you can get your first two meals free by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's right, two free meals just for going to blueapron.com slash twit. And we thank Blue Apron for their support of Tech News Tonight. Today, I am thrilled to talk to Karen Walrond, author of the best-selling book, The Beauty of Different. Karen is a writer, a photo essayist, essayist a creator of the site, chukalunks.com. We met online when our kids were little, and we have been keeping up with each other ever since. Now, Leo and I interviewed Karen back in 2007 on the parenting podcast that some of you might have listened to on Twit, and I am excited to have her back to talk about what she's doing now. Welcome, Karen. Oh, it's so great to see you. It's great to see you. I mean, I love looking at your pictures on Instagram and Facebook, and I just uh, have admired your work for so long. Uh, there, we're looking so at much. some of them now. I wanted to talk to you because last month you traveled to Malawi as part of the One campaign. One is an yeah. international advocacy group aimed at ending extreme poverty and preventable disease, particularly in Africa. Tell us about One. Yeah, so I've been actually working with One for... Um, quite some time now, for several years, and they're really awesome in that they're not a charity, they're a not-for-profit advocacy organization. So what they do is you become a member of one by signing up, putting in your email address, and then they take all of those signatures and um, tell Western organizations, usually Western governments like the U.S., but other governments as well, that all of these people care deeply about fighting poverty and um, preventable diseases like malaria, HIV, tuberculosis. So every now and then they'll send you a petition to sign and you sign it and that's it. So there's no um, money. They don't ask you for money. They don't ask you for anything like that. It's just sort of to make sure that uh, that eyes are still on um, any issues about poverty that are happening specifically in Africa as well. So they're, they're a great, great organization founded by Bono from U2. So they're an, a group that wants to get the word out. So is that how you got involved? Because I know you have a pretty big social media following. Yeah, exactly. So I was invited um, just for that reason um, about three or four years ago, I guess it's now in 2011, um, to be a part of their advocacy uh, of their um, advisory board on specifically targeting um, women and um, and girls. And so right now their focus is on that because uh, poverty, it turns out, is sexist. That poverty actually affects women and girls more than it affects um, men. Usually a, a lot of it has to do with um, health care issues, you know, um, pregnancy and that kind of thing. So um, so I'm part of this board that, that focuses on that. So the trip was sponsored by Heifer International. Uh, that's a group that empowers families by helping bring sustainable agriculture and commerce to areas with a long history of poverty. Uh, for those who've never heard of this organization, how does it work? So I love this organization. I've actually um, used them before I actually worked with them. And basically what you can do is you can um, buy a cow or buy, cat, buy a, a goat and gift it to a friend. So my family actually gives each other's um, for gifts of, of livestock, but the livestock doesn't actually come to our family members. They're actually given to a family um, somewhere in the world, not just Africa, but anywhere around the world um, to help uh, you know subsistence farmers sort of get on their feet. And the beauty of it is uh, as they help them become farmers, they teach them things, not just farming, but also uh, savings and loan organizations. They teach gender equality and all these other things. So as the farmers start to thrive and their livestock start to have offspring, they pay it forward by giving the females of the offspring to other families in the community and eventually the entire community thrives. So it's a really great organization. I love this organization too, because I, I think that we have so much stuff. Our kids have so much stuff. It's so hard when you're thinking of giving gifts. We do the same thing, um, just yeah. you know, for weddings and uh, you know, just whenever you know that you want to give someone something, but you don't need any more stuff. This is a great way to do. Yeah, we we're, we're we're big on it in our family. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the trip. Yeah, so uh, this year I've I've been to Africa several times with um, with the One Campaign. Uh, this one was to Malawi, which is a 
a country, a landlocked country in sort of the south, southeastern part of Africa. Um, and we were there specifically to see some of these farmers that have received uh, aid from Heifer International, as well as a couple of clinics that have gotten a lot of aid from USAID. Um, and so we basically spent five days there uh, visiting farmers, visiting, um, you can see some of the photographs, visiting uh, uh, women who had savings and loan organizations, uh, clinics that helped uh, women who were HIV positive um, and pregnant give birth to HIV negative children, which is fantastic. Um, so it was just really sort of a, a, a opportunity for us to see the good that is happening on the ground um, there and sort of tell the story. So. Um, and obviously it was a wonderful opportunity for me to take some great photographs as well. Yeah, we should say all the photographs that we're listening, if you're watching uh, the video version there, they're all Karen's photographs and, and they are beautiful. So uh, tell us a little bit about the equipment that you used. Yeah, so um, on this particular trip, I had two digital cameras. Um, I'm a big Nikon girl, so uh, what I do, it's sort of, it's almost comical the way that I shoot on these things. I have two camera bodies on me. Um, one of them is a Nikon D4, which is sort of my big beast um, that has a, uh, a wide angle lens on it. And then I also have a Nikon D300, which has a long telephoto lens. So I can switch sort of cameras depending on what I wanna shoot without having to switch lenses out and that sort of thing. So, um, so yeah, that's the D4, that's, that's my baby um, that you can see here. And so I, I love, uh, sort of, I sort of have a lot of camera and a lot of gear. It, I, I really do sort of look ridiculous with it, but it's a way that I can get, I can get all the shots that I need, um, you know, when, and not have to worry about switching out lenses and dusty conditions or anything like that. And you said you still like to shoot and film sometimes also. I do, yeah. I have a, um, I have a, 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 a beautiful uh, camera that I love. It's a Hasselblad, which is sort of like, um, it's it's a medium format camera, so it actually takes the photographs in the square format format that you might see in Instagram. But it's film. Um, it was a Christmas present from my husband a few years ago, and it's absolutely my favorite thing. It takes beautiful shots, um, and so I do shoot with that. I still shoot with my very first Nikon, which was a film camera that I got over 20 years ago. Um, I love film. I, the film has a different feel to it. It's it's sort of like having all of those filters that you can get on Instagram without actually having the filter on it. So I really, I love playing with them. And, and you have to think about it in a different way because you have to be very careful. Film is expensive, so you have to be very careful when you compose the shot. So it's almost meditative when you use the film cameras. Well, you have an excellent series, uh, your Thrive series that you're doing now. It's women over 40, and you, I think those pictures are film, correct? Yep, that they're all film. They're all with the Hasselblad. Yeah, I love, I love it's, it's such a joy to, to shoot those pictures. And also, um, I've been able to find some really wonderful uh, women who share great stories about what it means to thrive. Um, so that's my latest uh, personal project that I've been working on that's sort of giving me a whole lot of joy. Well, it's beautiful. People should Thank check you. those out, definitely. So you are a social media expert. You've been doing this for so long. I know when we met, uh, it was we were both doing mommy blogs. It was yep. back in the beginning when our kids were very small. Uh, and But you've just developed it into this uh, business that looks like a lot of fun. And uh, so do you have any advice for aspiring photographers who want to get more eyes on their work? Um, yeah, well, you know, I, I'm old school, so I'm a blogger. I love blogging, even though a lot of people don't blog anymore. So I'm kind of big on blogging. I feel like um, it's the medium where you can uh, tell a lot of stories and not be um, not be confined to only 140 characters or anything else like that. So I'm sort of big um, on, on blogging. But I think uh, if you're a photographer, you definitely need to be on Instagram. I love Instagram. Um, I, it's it's a beautiful medium to, to get inspired by and also to certainly grow your audience that way. So I, I'm a huge fan of those. But, um, you know, I guess my biggest bit of advice uh, for anybody is, you know, there's so much social media out there. Uh, you don't have to do it all. I don't do all the social media. I think you need to pick sort of the ones that really give you joy and work on those. Um, and, um, you know, sort of like, uh, what was that movie? Uh, if you build it, they will come. I think if you really work on on the social media that you really enjoy, the, the audience will follow. Right. So you you mentioned blogging. I wanted to ask you about that. I mean, there there aren't as many bloggers around. I know, especially mommy bloggers. Um, yep. You know, Heather Armstrong, who I think that you are also friends with. She was yeah. the, the she started Deuce. She was the biggest mommy blogger, and she's even recently said she's stepping back a little bit. Um, why do you still blog? Yeah, makes no sense, does it? Um, I, you know, I, I love, for me, I can't shoot without writing and I can't write without shooting. 
Um, it's something that gives me a lot of joy. I don't make money off of my, I don't have advertising on my blog, so it's not like it's my major source of income, but it is certainly how I stay connected with people. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, I would do it even if I, um, completely got offline and didn't do anything having to do with photography anymore. I think I would still blog. It's just, it's sort of a really great um, place for me to journal. Um, and I love, and, and also, you know, they say it's dying, but there's a lot of people certainly in my personal life that keep up with me uh, based on that blog. So I, you know, I will never let it go. As long as the medium still exists, I will likely um, still do this. And, and I'd like to say, you're the reason I did this, right? Like you were the first person I ever contacted going, what is this weblog thing? So, so you're to blame, Megan. Oh. <laughs> I know you were very sweet about a couple of years ago. You just sent me an email just saying how grateful you were. And it was just, it's amazing. It was one of those things where it's like, I, I definitely paid that forward because it feels great when someone is grateful for something that you've done. And uh, so it was a good reminder to tell the people in your lives that. So, so, so now that your daughter's a little bit older, mine is also, I find it more difficult to write about my children online mm -hmm. because, you know, they, they, they Google themselves. They find these things. Um, how, how have you been dealing with that? Well, you know, I actually stopped sort of mommy blogging um, years ago. I, I figured out pretty early on when she was about two that really um, her story was her story to tell and it wasn't mine. So I kind of really switched and did more photography and stuff. And obviously she, because of it is, you know, a visual medium, she appears on the site quite a bit, but I never post anything without her approval, first of all, first of all. And, um, and I try to put myself in the shoes of a teenager and what would I be okay with my mother um, posting online. So she always, she she has veto rights on anything that I post about her. And I really actually don't write um, anything personal about her online. It, you know, I may, you know, talk about photography and the way I shot something and she'd be my model to show how this bit of photography works. But I don't really write anything personal about her anymore. That is smart. Yeah. <laughs> so you're also a TEDx speaker. Um, tell us a little bit about your a beauty of different observations of a confident misfit TED Talk. Yeah. yeah. So that TED Talk actually happened right after I got back from Ethiopia. Um, and I was really sort of, um, you know, enamored with the fact I'd gone with a group of women who like really felt connected uh, with what they saw that was different there. And it dawned on me that it was very easy to... Um, to sort of find something that resonates with you when you're the tourist, but it's harder when you're at home to find uh, something that resonates with you if something is different in your homeland. And I wanted to talk a little bit about how uh, we can start seeing that sort of beauty and really sort of find that resonance with different when we're at home. Um, and so the thing that I talked about was looking for the light, which of course a photographer always does. Um, but everybody sort of has a light. I, you know, we use light words to describe people. We talk about eyes sparkling or a sparkling personality or a dazzling smile. Um, and I think that that's sort of the key to finding resonance when you see something that's different is to look for the light. So that was the whole um, TED talk that um, did very well. I was very flattered. Um, it, it caught on and I have people coming up to me constantly now who I've never seen going, hey, you're look for the light girl, which is always a good thing to be called. <laughs> So Karen, thank you so much for joining us. All of Karen's work is at chukalunks.com. As you said before, if there's one O, there's two. So there's three sets of two O's. Uh, you can find her on Twitter. She has the book, uh, the best-selling book, Beauty of Different. Her TED Talks, of course. Is there anything else that you're working on that you can talk about? Oh gosh, you know, I'm continuing to work with one and whenever I can and Heifer International. So definitely go see their, um, their websites for stuff like that. And I'm just going to keep shooting. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you for having me. It's lovely being here. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Have you seen our new website? It just launched today at twit.tv. You can go there and let me know what you think on Twitter. I am at Megan Maroney. Or you can email me at Megan at twit.tv. And you can still subscribe to the video or the audio versions of the show at twit.tv slash TN2. And don't forget to write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. And watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific and subscribe or watch our morning show, Tech News, today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.